This is about the token system that I use on my Prometheum platforms. You could use it for other platforms, but it's mainly applicable to Prometheum right now. It's the only place I'm using it. This is something I meant to discuss in the Prometheum platform video, but I forgot, and that video is already 35 minutes long. And we have added to it since that video was made, so it's actually a good thing that I forgot, because now we can cover even more. So what is the token system? Quite simply, you cannot easily send information from platforms to the ground and vice versa. You essentially can't send signals from the ground to a platform and sending signals from the platform to the ground is awkward. There's no direct way to do it, so this is how we do it. I've also called these analog combinators because that's essentially how they function. But what we're talking about is this little system up here. So before we get into it, we need to understand the problem that this was initially invented to solve. So the problem is that when you have a Prometheum science platform, it picks up a bunch of eggs at Novice, it goes out to the Prometheum area, gathers a bunch of chunks, makes the science like it's doing right now. This one's a relatively shallow in right now, so it's not making it full steam yet. This one is going at full steam, but this is also an older model with only three grabbers and it doesn't quite saturate the belts as nicely as the new one will once it's a little deeper in but they still use the same system so what happens is these ships go out pick up a bunch of chunks make a bunch of Prometheum use all their eggs head back home with a bunch of Prometheum science they arrive at Novice and if Novice is not requesting all the Prometheum science we have a pretty big request down there right now it's much larger than the other requests, which are usually a couple hundred K. But if we look at the Prometheum request, if I can find it, that one is set to pull down 2 million if the threshold gets a million. It's essentially a latch system. If it drops below 1 million, it'll request 2 million. And uh, we have quite a bit of storage for that. And as I said, all the rest are way less than that. So that's the one science that is going to be... Uh, buffered in a much higher quantity but even then you will never really sustain Prometheum science at the rate you can sustain other sciences mainly due to UPS limitations so it's there's always going to be toggling between research productivity and your other sciences so what can happen is that your ship comes back home to novice still has a bunch of Prometheum science but novice still has a bunch of Prometheum science so it can't unload its cargo but it'll start requesting eggs, even though it still has Prometheum science, and this obviously creates a problem where the ship cannot really leave. In the worst case that can happen is that its cargo gets full, because it's already so full of Prometheum science it can't hold all the eggs. And so it gets like a partial delivery of eggs, it can't get the rest of eggs, gets stuck in orbit, the eggs hatch and destroy your ship. So, what we need to do is tell the egg launchers to not deliver the eggs to the ship unless this, the, the platform has no Prometheum science. But, you know, there's no simple way to do it. You can't set requests on the cargo platform, on the space platform. You, you can set it on the, the ground one, on the cargo landing pad, you can set requests. But you can't do it on the space version for some reason, which, uh, you know, has got to be just to make our lives miserable. I can think of no other reason. So, the behavior we want, as I said, is the science needs to be unloaded before the egg launches are set. So, the, pl so, the, so the, the, the planet needs to somehow know when it's okay to send the eggs up. And that's what this system solves. In order to understand it, we need to look at the second half of the system over here with the launchers. So this is one of the launch complexes. These are all the same right now. And we have a bunch of them. I need more, but you know we've got about 100 of them so far. And all the magic happens in the, this one little decider combinator. Where if it sees a biter request, and there is no legendary barrel request, it enables the inserters to put the eggs in the silo. And then vice versa, we have one inserted up here, which is hard to see because of the tip of the rocket, which, if the inverse condition is true, see the set to do not equal, the set to equal, it will pull the remaining eggs out of the silo and we'll scrap them so that it will give it a nice reset. 
Now, how the barrel actually works over here is we have it set so that we, we have one legendary barrel that is on board. It's currently outside right now because this is set so that if there is science in the hub, it will pull out the barrel and put it on this little belt. And this is the opposite. This says if the science equals zero, put the barrel back in, and then we have a logistic request for a legendary barrel from Novice. So that request will show up when science is on the ship, but it will go to zero when science is no longer on the ship. So that's how we do it. That, that's our analog combinator. That's, our, that, that's how we essentially create a combinator where Woob didn't want us to hit a combinator. It's not a digital combinator, it's an analog one, or a token system, if you prefer it that way. The barrel being the token. I chose a legendary barrel because it was relatively easy to make, and something that you would never normally make. Leg quality barrels don't hold more than regular barrels, so there's no reason to ever actually make one. We have one on each ship. As you can see, they're both on the outside right now because both ships have science. And yeah, that's pretty much it. It's uh, not as complicated as it might sound, but this is a very, very powerful tool that lets you control conditions on ships in ways that normally are not possible, given, you know, the basic tools in the game. So you can also make this only take up one tile if you do two red inserters back to back, you know, one uh, outputting and one inputting in a belt, but um, I'm kind of a red inserter hater because, uh, well, they kind of suck for UPS and you know, I, I just like trying to see if I can do it without it if I can, and in this case we happen to just barely have the space to do it, but if you are really tight on space up here, you could do it also in just one tile. Yeah, so that's how it works. It has a legendary barrel requesting from Novice. There is never at any point a legendary barrel on Novice, and no ship will ever drop a legendary barrel on Novice. These legendary barrels only exist on the Prometheum ships, one per ship, and it gets taken out. And when it gets taken out, that activates the barrel request from Novice, and when it puts back in, it disables it. So when again, when it's taken out, it activates the request. There is no ship in orbit right now, so that's showing no request, okay to, okay to launch eggs. But if the ship were to come in right now, you would see this go to equals one until the science is fully unloaded, and then it will launch all the eggs. So that is the first implementation of the token system, and the one that was implemented in the Prometheum ship video. Since then, I have implemented another version of the token system, which is a wee bit more complicated to solve another problem that is similar. That brings us to what we have coined the gas station bathroom key. Now, I don't know how uh, it works for you guys in other countries, but generally, uh, where I live in the States, uh, a lot of times in, in gas stations, you know, there'll be a key to the bathroom you can get at the front desk and um or at the cashier i mean not the front desk and uh there's only one bathroom key you get the key from the cashier you go use the bathroom and you give the key back the key aspects of this is there's only one key that exists at a time period it's not one key per ship but only one key total and only one person is allowed in the bathroom at a time and they have to return the key to the cashier before the uh like someone else can use the bathroom and that's essentially the principle that's going on here with the second token system which is aptly named the bathroom key so with the bathroom key this one's a little quite a bit more complicated because while there's only one total and not one per ship unlike the legendary barrel key which controls whether or not it can request prometheum the gas station bathroom key actually is dropped to planets and requested back up now the way this works right now, I'll walk you through it, is on each ship, the, the schedules are the same. Okay, I, I, should, I almost forgot to mention. The problem this is meant to solve, <laughs> I should have started with that. The problem this is meant to solve is to stop two ships from being in novice orbit at the same time. Because if you have both ships in novice orbit at the same time, then the eggs can get split or the eggs can get partially launched to one then partially launched to the other this screws up the timings and everything it's you know all kinds of bad things can happen you only want one ship to be loading at a time so what what this does since we have two prometheum ships right now like i tend to my current ships right now are a bit smaller 
than some of the other ships, uh, you know, other people at similar levels of SPM are doing, like minor, whereas most people are going in the bigger, you know, giant ships, more eggs. I kind of slimmed it down. I have only around, well, the, the old model is carrying 150k. The new model right now is carrying 175, but we're going to be able to ramp that to 200k pretty soon, and then we'll update the old model, the Donager, to the new model as well. But, uh, the, what we want to happen, the desired behavior, is that only one ship is allowed at novice at a time. And so these have the exact same schedule, and the magic happens here with these two Aquila stops. Uh, the Fulgora stop, because, just in case someone happens to ask, the Fulgora stop is just to drop off a small portion of eggs, like 2,000 eggs at Fulgora, if Fulgora requests eggs. It's the same distance for a novice Gleba Aquilo versus novice Fulgora Aquilo, but ships default to the Gleba path. And we had huge issues with trying to have a separate ship loading biter eggs. Um, it's a bit of an unsolvable problem right now. Uh, I might go into that a little more at the end of the video, but yeah, th that's what the Fulgora stop is, just to drop a, a small amount of eggs. But the magic happens with these two Aquilo stops. So when a ship is returning from the Shattered Planet, like let's say the Donager right now is pretty close. Actually, we should be able to see it happen pretty soon here. Well, maybe it takes a while for it to get from the edge to Aquilo, and uh, I might wrap up the video before then, but it comes back to Aquilo and it requests this rare barrel. And this rare barrel is empty, and this barrel currently exists on Aquilo. It's probably in. Uh, I don't even remember where the hell I put the thing. But it's somewhere around. Oh, it's over here. There we go. I found it. I found the key. So this is where the rare barrel is. So what happens is it requests this rare barrel up, and it has to have this rare barrel in order to progress past a kilo. That and the quantum processors. And once it has the key, it's allowed to go to novice, get its eggs, and then on the way out, it has to stop at a kilo for a sec and make sure it gets rid of the key. So that it doesn't, you know, put the key in its car and drive off into the sunset. It's not allowed to go to the Prometheum area. The key essentially stays on this leg right here. It's not allowed to go past. The key does not leave the, the gas station area. And both ships have those conditions, and since only one ship has the key, it means, you know, the first ship, the Donager, right now is ahead of the Pella. It's, uh, yeah, right here. The Pella is right behind it. They're not as close as it looks because of the distances involved uh, in the Shattered Planet. It comes back, goes and gets the key, goes to Novice, then goes back and out. And, uh, well, actually, it comes back through Gleba, but then it goes out through Fulgore, if you want to be really specific. That it goes out through Aquilo, drops off the key, and then the next ship can request it. Now, we have a bit of modification that has to be done with the key, because there's the issue of you can't request an item that you are dropping to a planet. Like, if you have a planet that, say, requests X item, and the ship also requests X item, and they're both present, like, uh, you know, it, it'll cancel each other out. And this is to prevent a loop. This is to prevent uh, something being launched up and down, you know, over and over, and things getting stuck, and just other degenerate behavior. So essentially, they cancel out. So, but we still want to have the key essentially be the same object, and that's where the barrel is the really clever part of this, is because the barrel can be filled and empty. So... We pick up the empty barrel from Aquilo, we take it to Novice, it gets dropped on Novice, there is a request on Novice for the key over here, and that key is then, it's way the hell over here because that's where the water was, that key is then filled and then put back in, and then that is requested back up. So you can see this request from Aquilo with the empty barrel it requests a filled barrel from Novice. The filled barrel is then dropped at a kilo, which again also has a request for that, and then is emptied back out over here. And uh, we, we have this just set up, you know, putting it in extra, another barrel and then destroying it just to make an easy automated way to destroy that little bit of water that's coming in so it doesn't build up and we have to worry about destroying it then. 
So there you go. Essentially set it up so that you have an, a barrel. It really works best with a barrel. Um, I can't really think of how you would do this with any other object, but a barrel is definitely the most intuitive one for it because the same rarity of object can be both filled and emptied. You know, essentially changing the type of the object without actually changing the object itself. Allowing for two different requests. And, uh, yeah. That keeps the ships, uh, not completely asynchronous. Because they can still wind up chasing each other, kind of, like how they are now. Like, that just kind of tends to naturally happen. But the important part is so that it is that they don't wind up both at novice at the same time. So, so when one, if, if we're not doing Prometheum science and one ship, uh, and one ship is resting at novice, the other ship will rest at a kilo until that ship passes it and hands off the bathroom key and lets it go into novice. So we've got the Doniger coming in right now. It'll be there in a minute. And then we can see that key get requested. Yeah, this is a this is a very very powerful tool. It was kind of like hard to title this video. It's not something that's easily searchable for, unfortunately, because it's the kind of thing that you know you won't naturally stumble upon unless you're actually searching for it. But this is a very very powerful tool to have in your arsenal when it comes to late game platform management, precisely because we cannot set requests or do circuit controls for legit for the requests. On the ship itself and as you can see right here a kilo it's uh, on a kilo the Doniger is at a kilo it's now requesting the barrel and the barrel is being launched up well I think it's launching the quantums first up oh, it got the barrel yeah, we, we've got quantums being launched from both the generic silos and these silos because this is a provider chest because we also need them locally kind of a little unavoidable but it's not really a problem but there you go there's definitely other uses for this as well I'm sure I'll wind up using it more for things that I haven't thought of yet. You know, with the, when we did the legendary barrel, I thought that would be the only one, and then now we've got a rare barrel. Who knows? I'll have a rainbow color of different barrels at some point that all trigger different conditions. But for now, we've got things working more or less how we want, and the bathroom key system is working quite nicely. So there's a little overview of the token system for you. Hopefully, it helps you out. Thanks for watching. My name is Stupid Fat Hobbit, and I stream at Twitch TV SF Hobbit.